cái này làm bằng đá mọi người collapse section of our lava tube. Our lava tube is four miles long. It extends from the volcano all the way to just east of the highway. If there were no collapse sections, we would have the world's longest lava tube. So our volcano is that dark kind of an impressive hill just out there. It's about three miles away from us. It has this tiny little peak on top. It is a shield type volcano, so it doesn't blow up. The lava just oozes out. It was set to erupt every 1,200 years, but it has not erupted for 12,000 years. So it's currently dormant. And the only reason it would go off is if the super volcano in Yellowstone did, but then we're all kind of screwed anyway, so. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. That'd be the case. Yeah. So we have two types of lava rock out here. We have the Hoi Hoi lava rock. That's the one we're all kind of standing on. It'll be making up most of our trail. And then we have a, -A lava rock, which is a much more porous rock that's lining all of our trail. The difference is just the cooling periods. So lava rock can take anywhere from 24 hours to 300 years to cool completely. So the Hoi Hoi lava rock cooled a lot more slowly and it gave time for all the gas inside the lava to escape. And as you can see in the Aa lava rock, it's a lot more bubbly looking and the gas did not escape nearly as fast. So, any questions about any of that? Okay. So right here we have some life-size representations of the Cordelian people. They weren't cavemen, but they weren't quite Native American either. They fell right in between the two categories. They were completely nomadic and they traveled in groups from about 9 to 11 their whole lives. So we have actually ha we actually have 300 dig sites from here in southern Idaho reaching all the way to Texas and they can be dated back to 6,000 years. So our oldest dig site is actually found at Wilson Butte. You can't see it but it's a few miles that way. So they didn't live to be too long, oh, too old I mean, um, only about 18 to 20 years on average. Um, this is because of harsh elements that they had to live in. So the pistol and mortar in front of the woman's lap, that is actually an artifact that is 3,000 years old. Um, it was just used to grind their food. Um, lava rock does have a high iron concentrate in it, and so too much of it can kill you and cause organ failure. And when they were grinding up their food, the little bits of lava rock were always falling in with it. So that kind of led to their short lives. And I'm sure after 20 years of eating rock, they didn't have teeth, so maybe you not try that. I wonder where they found food. Yeah. In the middle of the desert. Yeah. Jack rabbits and coyotes everywhere yeah. you look. Probably what they lived on mice too, I suppose. So our volcano has had six eruptions, each about 1,200 years apart. You can see four of the six layers right here. So you see the thicker, more dense rock, that's one layer, and then there's the crumbly bits in between, and that's what separates them. So the green that you see on our rocks, that's lichen, it's just moss. 
the orange red sometimes a little bit of yellow that's iron oxide which is basically just rust kind of helps kill off the cordelium people and then the white that you see on the rock that's calcium carbonate i think it's called it's the salt so any questions on any of that about a couple things. So the cave was discovered in 1854 by a 10-year-old boy named Alpha Kinsley. His family were goat ranchers on this land and they actually lost part of their herd and he was sent out to find them. He found a couple of them drinking in a puddle of ice water just at the entrance of the cave. At the time, the cave entrance was 14 inches high and two foot across. And after you go through the entrance, you could only go back about 10 feet and then it was just packed full of ice. So he kind of did what any 10 year old boy would do and they found something cool like that. Went home and told everyone. So word got out to family and friends and soon the whole town of Shoshone heard, had heard all about it. At the time this wasn't actually owned by anyone so you could come here and do whatever you wanted. So people from Shoshone actually got some dynamite and they blasted the front entrance of the cave open so that they could harvest the ice. By doing so they somewhat disrupted the airflow which is essential to the cooling system in here but not enough that they really noticed. So they would actually ship the ice all the way to the coast of Oregon and they would use <laughs> sawdust and hay to keep it cool in their train carts, late 30s. Um, but someone actually blasted the back of the cave open with some more dynamite. By doing so, they completely disrupted the airflow and in 15 years after doing so, all the ice was completely melted away. So um, in the early 40s, the government kind of took over this land after they heard all about it. They made it a national monument, I think that's what it's called. And so they spent only about five years trying to figure out what they could do to try to restore the ice. They soon came to the conclusion, not conclusion, sorry. They soon decided it wasn't worth the time or the money, but they put it up for lease. And in 1952, a man named Russell Robinson had just returned home from service and became very fascinated with this place. So he took a lease and he spent just the first 14 years of his leaf, lease trying to figure out the science behind the cave and learning how to fix it. He soon came to the conclusion that the airflow was disrupted and it was pretty easy. All they had to do was fill in the back of the cave with some rock. I don't know why it took him 14 years to come up with that idea, but he got it. So every year after they sealed the back of the cave off, they got double ice each year. It, our ice rate has slowed down quite rapidly. Right now we're making about a six to 12 inches of ice each winter, and we're losing three inches in summer. And that's only from the door opening and closing so much and all the body heat. So we're about to go down. On our way down, it's kind of slippery, the steps are. So just be careful, watch your step. Don't freak out if some water falls on your hair. Um, a lot of little kids start screaming there's a spider. It's not a spider, it's just some water drops. <laughs> yeah, Judy. You got that, Judy. <laughs> I like how they pick on you. So, on our way back out, I do have to stay behind and shut the lights and everything off. So, if the first person out could actually stand where the gentleman in the back is, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. All been going. Anybody 
have any questions so far? So here's our prehistoric bear bones. These bones are about 10,000 years old. They belong to a mother bear. Um, we don't have the cub bones anymore because they were stolen a number of years ago by a former employee. I don't know why they did it. It's kind of sad and a little freaky that they did. But the mother bones were all that were, were recovered. So these bones were actually found by Russell Robinson when he was cleaning out the back of the cave. Um, so we don't believe that she actually lived in here with her cubs. We think she came in here to hibernate, but 10,000 years ago, this was still an ice cave. And so they got trapped in the ice in the back of the cave. And then after they blasted the back of the cave out, um, when all the ice started to melt away, they actually decayed because they were still perfectly preserved for the 10,000 years. So any questions on the bears? Okay. Right here, we're standing on just over five feet of solid ice, and it freezes all the way down to the bottom of this lava tube, and then there's just a couple inches of water on top. And so the deeper into the cave we go, the deeper the ice will get. Soon we'll be standing on 17. Ooh. No, baby, no, getting any ideas of the ice. Actually, um, we did have some Olympic figure skaters come in here um, in the 1900s, and before all the snowfall was here, um, they just kind of had the whole cave to themselves, and you can see their pictures, names, and years in our little museum. So it's pretty fascinating. So right here, if we look under where we were just walking, you'll see some wooden plates sticking out of the ice. That's actually the original boardwalk that Russell Robinson built. So a lot of little kids ask me if that's a dinosaur footprint. It's not. We call our wishing well. Feel free to pitch in and throw some things down there. That's how my boss plays the electric bill. <laughs> um, it's actually from an old light bulb on the original boardwalk. It melted so deeply into the ice that 20 years later it's still warm in the Antarctic. <laughs> so this narrow passageway we went under, this is called a pressure bell. They form when a magma is flowing through this lava tube and then the gas is trying to escape too quickly, and then so it literally raises the ceiling because of the pressure, and then after the eruption, it drops it back down lower than it originally was. Okay. Any questions? Okay. These were not actually made in this cave. They were brought in here from a sister cave a couple miles closer to the volcano. Our cave does not produce stalagmites or stalactites because they are made out of mostly a'a -a lava rock and a lot of this is pohoi hoi lava rock and they also have a good portion of limestone mixed in with them so does anyone want to take a guess on how much they weigh we'll start with the big one on the left any guesses well, what's rock basalt um i think most of it is but it also has some limestone in it i'm gonna say it's lighter than it looks but i don't know yeah, yeah, I'm going to say heavier, 600 pounds. No, it's just about over 100 pounds. 50 pounds. Any other guesses? So the big one on the left only weighs 10 pounds. Wow. And the one on the right weighs 6 pounds. They're actually 100% hollow and they can float on water. I'll be hmm. your eyes. Huh. So right here, this really provides the perfect insulation to keep this place nice and cool. So you can see some ice stalagmite starting to form. All that's red, that's kind of the iron oxide stuff. If you look out in this dark kind of patch, this is where our lava tube actually branched out into a Y. But in past eruptions, it cooled too quickly and it basically just sealed itself off. Okay, so 65 feet of rock. Hot. It kind of confuses me a lot too. <laughs> so right here, actually you can reach down and touch the ice if you'd like. Please don't touch the ice on the wall but go ahead and touch the ice on the ground. Good. So 
So right here is where we're standing on 17 feet thick of solid ice below us, and then there's just a couple inches of water on top. So all this rock fall right in front of us, this is actually due to where they blasted the back of this cave out. If you look up in the top right hand corner, you'll see a dark patch of rock, and then there's the white rock right in the middle of it. That's the man-made wall that Russell Robinson yeah. built to seal off this cave. And then right above it is also man-made. So here's our little rock collection. These were all found within a 100 mile radius. They all glow under a black or UV light, except for the geodes surrounding. These were artificially dyed. So I'm actually gonna turn the lights off so you can all see them a lot better. Great. Great. So um, flash photography doesn't work as good right here because it creates a glare off the glass, but I don't care. So lights off in three, two, one. So I'm not sure why these were brought in here, but these were brought in here in the 60s. I think a bunch of hippies brought them in. My pop socket goes. Dude, that is neat. No pop socket. Dude, you're um, okay. I'm gonna have that in my house. You gotta send me those. I will. Okay. When we get internet money, it. Dude, it's a Huh? Yeah, did, wait, did someone ask a question? No. Oh, okay. Okay. Maybe my people. Shut up. His socks are. Okay. Can I have his socks? My shoelace is cool. Kind of. So, does anyone want another minute with the light off, or do you want it back on? Be okay. I'm good. I could literally fall okay. asleep in here. I'd be fine. All right. So please don't look at the light bulb when I turn it on. So lights on in three, two. So you're all good now. Um. So if you wanna, oh shoot, sorry. I'm gonna turn them back off really quick. So if you wanna turn around, this is my favorite view of the cave. This is our Gothic arch. I'm not really sure why it's called that, but this is the furthest point you can see out of anywhere in the cave. Okay. okay, so lights on in three, two, one. So does anyone want some family pictures while we're down here or anything? You want a picture? Huh? Jet. Hey. I'll give you the camera and take a picture. 